Hey there, today I'm going to be showing you five new creative and delicious ways to use refrigerated pie crust. Let's go get to it. To kick us off today, we are making the easiest mini quiches. So into this medium sized bowl, I'm cracking seven eggs in. After you're through with that, go ahead and add one cup of milk in, an eighth a teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of salt, and then you'll add in one cup of fully cooked crumbled bacon. I just used this bag of bacon, or you could add in sausage or ham, whatever your preference is. Next, two cups of mozzarella cheese, followed by two cups of freshly chopped spinach. Whisk this all together. Over to my cutting board, it is time to work on our pie crusts now. So I have a 14 ounce package of pie crust. It comes with two pie crusts just like this. You're gonna cut them into about three and a half inch round circles. I just used a cookie cutter or you could use a rim of a glass or a measuring cup. I made sure to grease my muffin tin super well with nonstick spray. And now you're going to grab some of the pie crust circles that you made up and then just flatten them with your hands or you could use a rolling pin and stick them on the bottom of the muffin tins. This makes a total of 24 quiches. Now that my muffin tins are full of the pie crust, as you see, there's a little bit of overlay with some of the pie crust and that's completely fine. You're going to scoop about three tablespoons of the egg mixture in each one. This will bake in a preheated oven to 375 degrees for about 25 minutes. My family absolutely loves these little mini quiches. We like to meal prep them actually, so we just keep them in an airtight container in the refrigerator up to four days or we freeze them. And of course they last in the freezer a lot longer. And then to reheat them, we just stick them in the microwave. These are so filling and delicious. They're also super healthy. I could honestly say I am jumping for joy, so excited to show you how to make these little raspberry cheesecake bites. So to get it started, you are going to mix together a tablespoon and a half of cornstarch and three tablespoons of water together. Just whisk it until it is completely smooth. You don't want any clumps in there. So, no, so now over to my stove, I'm going to add one cup of fresh raspberries along with a fourth a cup of sugar. I have it on low heat at this point. Stir this all together and let this cook for about a minute or so. After the minute, add in the cornstarch slurry we just made up and let this continue to cook on low heat for about five to six minutes. While that's cooking away, we're going to get started on the cream cheese mixture. So in this bowl, I added four ounces of softened cream cheese along with a fourth a cup of sugar. I just mixed it together with my electric mixer until it was smooth. Once it looks something like this, it is time to add in one egg yolk along with a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and a half a teaspoon of lemon juice. You're going to continue to mix this together with an electric mixer or a whisk for about two more minutes. After cooking on low for about five minutes, your raspberry mixture should look something like this. So now I'm going to set it to the side. For this recipe, I'm only using one pie crust. So I just pulled my pie crust out and I unrolled it. I do wanna let you know, it is way easier to unroll a pie crust when it's like at room temperature. So leave it out for about 15 minutes before you use it. Anyways, after I unrolled it, I just cut it with my pizza cutter into about 15 different pieces just like this this. Now with the cream cheese mixture, you're going to evenly spread it right onto the pie crust. Right over the yummy cream cheesy cheesecakey mixture, you are going to add that beautiful raspberry mixture. Try to spread that out as even as possible. And then after that, you're going to roll up each individual um, triangle that you cut. It might get a little bit messy, but don't worry. It will be absolutely perfectly delicious in the end. 
Now you'll be placing the raspberry cheesecake bites on a sheet pan lined with parchment paper. This will go in a preheated oven to 375 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes or until they are a nice golden color on top, just like this. I sprinkled mine with a little bit of powdered sugar on top. I cannot even begin to describe to you how good these are. You need to try this recipe. This is probably one of my favorite treats of all time. They taste perfectly like cheesecake on the inside and they have a strong raspberry flavor. They are so good. Now we're making these really simple pizza pockets. To get this one started, I have 14 ounces of pie crust right here. It's the equivalent to two pie crusts, if you're wondering. Just unroll them onto a cutting board or a surface and then place them on top of each other. They won't stick together, don't worry. And then with about a four inch cookie cutter or a glass or something around four inches, just cut out circles like this. With any excess dough, you could just roll it into a ball and then roll it out with a rolling pin and then make more circles out of it. But anyways, now I'm going to separate the top of the pie crust from the bottom on two separate plates. Just place half of the amount of the circle pie crust on a sheet pan lined with parchment paper, then add two teaspoons of pizza or marinara sauce on top, followed by a sprinkle of Italian seasoning, and then two teaspoons of mozzarella cheese. Next, you'll add about three pepperonis on each one, or you could add whatever type of toppings you want, like sausage or veggies. And then you'll add another teaspoon of sauce on top of that, and then you will cover these with the other half of the pie crusts. You do want to seal the seam so you don't have a big mess in the end. I'm doing so by using a smaller cookie cutter. I'm not going all the way through, but I'm just sealing the seam with it. If you don't have a smaller cookie cutter or something like that, you could just seal the seam with a fork and that will work perfectly fine. And then I just whisked an egg up and I'm just brushing some of the egg on top. After that, you're going to want to either cut a couple holes on the top of each pizza pocket or I'm just using a straw and poking a couple holes in like this. This will help it vent. Lastly, I sprinkled a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. This will bake in a preheated oven to 400 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. This is such a fun twist on regular old pizza. I like how the crust is nice and flaky. And then also I like how you could add anything you want inside of your own pizza pocket. This is a fun afternoon snack or a lunch, or you could even make this for dinner. You are definitely going to want to make these hand pies. They are out of this world. So for this recipe, I'm using two pie crusts, so 14 ounces of pie crust. You're going to want to use a cookie cutter or something circular to make circles in the pie crust. It doesn't really matter what size they are. You can make them however large or however small you want to. After that, if you have any leftover pie crust from cutting the circles, just roll it out and continue to make circles in until the pie crust is all gone. One thing that I typically like to do is after I'm finished cutting out all of my circles, I like to roll them out so they're a little bit thinner. This is gonna make the dough a little bit larger and it's going to help it cook when they're frying. So I just have blueberry pie filling right here. It's just a can of it. You could use whatever pie filling you like. Add about one to two teaspoons to the center of your pie and then just fold over the seams and pinch the seams like this or you could use a fork and seal the seams, whatever you prefer. Over to my large pot, I'm going to be adding about three cups of vegetable oil, or you could use canola oil. Let the oil get hot. You do want to make sure the oil is hot before you add the hand pies in, and then go ahead and add them in. You want to add them in batches just so you don't overcrowd the pot, and they'll cook better like that. So after a couple minutes of frying on each side, I remove them to a separate plate lined with paper towels. Now we're going to get started on the glaze in this little cup right here. I have a tablespoon of melted butter. Add in six tablespoons of powdered sugar, a half a tablespoon of milk, and about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Whisk this together until it is smooth, and then you're going to pour this all over the tops of the hand pies.
We used to have hand pies like these all of the time during the summer. They are perfectly flaky on the outside. The glaze is divine and the filling on the inside is nice and warm. This is a recipe you have to try. Now we're making this simple cheeseburger pie. Don't knock this recipe until you try it. I think you'll like it. To get it started, I'm just dicing up one onion into smaller pieces. My family likes onions, so I used an entire onion, but you could use a half of an onion or a quarter if you don't want so much onion. To my pan, I just added one pound of ground beef, cook the ground beef through, and then remove any excess grease. Now that my ground beef is cooked, add in your onion, cook the onion with the ground beef for about four to five minutes or until it starts to soften. The rest of the ingredients I'm adding in is just three fourths cup of ketchup, two teaspoons of yellow mustard, about a fourth a cup of chopped up dill pickles, and then a dash of pepper. Stir this all together and let it simmer for about one to two minutes. Into your pie pan, add that filling and then spread it out evenly. Sprinkle one cup of shredded sharp cheddar cheese over the top and then with one pie crust, put it over the top of the cheese and then kind of push it down. And with any of the pie crust hanging over the edge, I just like to cut it off. And then you do want to add some venting holes on the top. I just added four. This will bake in a preheated oven to 450 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. This is such a fun twist on a regular cheeseburger. The filling on the inside is absolutely delicious. It's cheesy and that pie crust tops it all off. I have so many more videos like this on my channel, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any more in the future. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.